So why was drive space a thing and so important around the early 1990s? Well, it all fell down to hard drive storage pricing. In 1994, the average price of a gigabyte of hard drive space was $1,994. That means that our theoretical 128 megabyte hard drive that we're using in this video would have cost $128 in 1994. Factoring inflation, that hard drive today would cost 200, just about $229 for 128 megabytes of hard drive space. It was a solution to a problem that hadn't been fixed through hardware. As we know today, hard drive space is increasing and the price per gigabyte is dropping. In something like hard drive doubling, memory doubling software, it's, it's not a thing today because the market doesn't demand it and doesn't bear it. So this video will focus on how much can we compress our hard drive and how much savings would that, that, that be? Yeah, can we get double space with it? Can we come close to that? And um, back in the early 90s, that was real dollars and cents. Today I'm gonna to start a new series of videos on remember when we had tiny little hard drives. Anyone who had a 46 computer or an older 386 back in the day will remember when 128 megabytes of hard drive space was decent. Uh, you could put Windows 3.1 on it. Uh, you could run a bunch of games. And uh, generally, you didn't have to swap out games for memory space. However, as uh, CD-ROMs became more popular back in the day, games became larger. Uh, they included video, more sound, uh, Windows got a little bloated, and then Windows 95 came out, and you can fit Windows 95 on a small little hard drive, um, but how well does that work? And uh, what solutions were developed for dealing with the small hard drive spaces? So today, I will start out on my 46 class computer. Now this does have a Pentium 83 overdrive, so it's a little bit faster, uh, but it's still, it's still high-end 486 class. And when I had this thing originally back in the day, I literally had a mechanical, uh, I think it was a 150 meg hard drive. And to go back in time as accurately as I can, I'm going to use this little 128 meg SanDisk compact flash module to simulate that. So I'll get everything up and booted. We'll see how Windows runs on 128 meg hard drive. And um, we'll talk about some of the solutions, starting with double space, uh, which was Microsoft's first solution to uh, increasing virtually the amount of hard drive space you had. Now this, my friends, is how my little hard drive fits in my old 486 computer. Just, just like that. And I have a couple of them. And I am running 16 megs of RAM. And this does have the older keyboard, so I have an adapter. I'm also using an ATX power supply. So I've wired up a switch here. I know it looks a little ragged, but it, it works. We have a crystal sound card, which runs terrifically. Uh, it emulates Sound Blaster, Sound Blaster Pro uses the same driver set or the crystal driver set. And then we have an IO, a Visa local bus, hard drive controller, which is running our compact flash and our CD-ROM 8X drive. And then I am using a serial mouse, a Logitech serial mouse. 
three button and original. And also, I'm running the video on a number nine video card with a RAM expansion. And that also is Visa Local Bus. So without further ado, I will get things booted and we'll see what it looks like. So far so good. And we have our primary master C, 128 meg. We'll go turbo mode as default on the Visa Local Bus hard drive controller card. We have all our IO, the P24T Pentium overdrive. We have our Soundmaster Pro emulation going on. And we've installed the mouse driver. So let's take a look at our hard drive space. We'll just do a check disk. And we can see that on this compact flash card, which to tell the truth, I have owned since the early 90s. So it's been around the block quite a few times. We have 127.5 megs total disk space. We do have some DOS games installed on this. I'll show you the directory shortly. Um, I do have um, DOS 6.22 on it, and I do have the memory management for DOS 6.2 running to maximize the available memory. And we also have some bad sectors on this drive. I will show you, I did use ScanDisk and it did block them off. We have 628 kilobytes of free memory, which, is pretty good. And we can see that we have the uh, extended memory available to us. I don't have any EMS running. Uh, I'm not running any programs that demand the EMS. I just have the extended memory driver running. And we have the CD-ROM drivers, mouse drivers. And let's take a look again at what I was talking about with those bad sectors on this old compact flash. So as we can see, as it runs a quick surface scan, we can see the, um, the five bad clusters. And it has previously scanned the, the drive. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll exit the scan in just a second. But just to show you what that looks like. So DOS 6.22 and some earlier versions did include some basic hard drive management tools. Um, it did allow you to you know, block off bad sectors, bad clusters. Um, on a mechanical drive, I'd be much more worried about the bad, um, about the bad areas on the drive surface. Um, with this compact flash, not so much worried about it. Uh, mechanically, it's not going to fail. It's just a matter of whether or not we're wearing out different areas of the actual compact flash over the years that I've owned it, write, rewrite. And these older drives have even much less life in them than if you were to buy one currently. Uh, I have another video up where I actually demonstrate using two one gigabyte industrial type compact flash cards in the same manner that I'm using this, this, this one here. Those are rated for a lot more read, write events. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit the surface scan, because we're in the good parts now anyways. And what is on this hard drive? So we have the usual, we have DOS, we have the mouse drivers, uh, we have the sound driver, Sound Blaster 16 drivers are in here. And then I just have some basic games that I was running previously, uh, just to kind of fill up the hard drive a little bit to demonstrate the um, the usage of the double space from Microsoft. And what I'm going to do now is I will install Windows 3.11 on this drive. And that will pretty much make it very close to what I would have or what someone would have had back in the early 90s on a 486 class system with a small hard drive.
So, as we can see, on my separate capture system, I am capturing the output from this computer. So I do have it going into my Samsung SyncMaster 950P, which is a very well maintained, if I say so myself, CRT monitor. It's a 19 inch monitor and it has the retractable pad with all the control keys. It has served me well over many years. I did buy that new. And then I am running a Core i5 system right here with my StarTech capture device. And I'm going to record that. And I think the next thing to do is show us that I am going to install Windows 3.11, Windows for Workgroups, off of original floppies. And I'll get that up and running. And then um, we'll try and increase our hard drive space. And as has always been a universal fact, Windows starts with the setup command. And there we go. We'll go ahead and fast forward this install and um, reboot and see where we're at. With the installation complete, we'll go ahead and reboot. And we'll go into Windows. And everything seems to be working. All right, we've got everything working. We can see here that of our 128 megabyte hard disk drive, we have 11.7 megs available. So we are critically running out of hard drive space. Before I compress the drive with drive space, I'll go ahead and run a few benchmarks in DOS, and then we'll compress the drive in Windows, go back into DOS, reboot so we're in real mode, and we'll go ahead and see if there's any difference running benchmarks on a compressed drive. And then we'll see how much space we actually get from that. So, we'll go ahead into Phil's benchmarks. And we'll go ahead and do a, we'll do a Quake time demo. And then um, we'll do a CPU and possibly a hard drive.
benchmark also. We'll go ahead and go into DOS and we will get into drive space. And let's see what we've got. Welcome to Drive Space Setup. And it requires 40K of memory, and we will try and throw that into the upper memory when we're done compressing our drive. And let's go ahead and let's do a custom. And we will compress existing drive C. And, uh, all right. So we have to leave our swap file on Windows, which is about 48 megs, uncompressed. But we don't have that much drive space, so what are we going to do? Let's make it 40 megs. We're not going to back up our files. We'll just continue and let's compress. So it'll do a scan disk. And we've already done this, so we're not going to run through the entire scan disk. Let's compress it anyways. We know we've got a couple of bad sectors in there.
So this is a 128 meg hard drive. And like we said, we're running a uh, Pentium Overdrive 83 megahertz. So we'll see how quickly it actually compresses this. So it says about 46 minutes. So I think we'll speed this up and take a look at the results. It looks like we're done. It compressed and defragmented. I did create the new drive I that contains 79.5 megabytes of uncompressed space, 43.8 megs of which will be used by Windows. Um, the remainder of the space has been set aside for files that must remain uncompressed. So let's go ahead and press enter and it should reboot. We'll check how much usable conventional memory we have. Check out what our new hard drive looks like. And then uh, run the same benchmarks on the compressed drive as we did on the uncompressed drive. So... Conventional memory. All right, so it did put it in the upper memory all by itself. So we still have 612K conventional memory free. And let's take a look at, all right. So we previously had approximately 11, not quite 12 megabytes of available disk space. We compressed, and now we have 72 megs free, and that does include a sizable I drive of uncompressed, and that's 83 megs. So, Let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. And we'll start with the uh, system information bench. And the CPU speed is of course the same.
and let's run the Quake time demo. The results look the same. Not seeing any slowdowns with the compressed drive use. Well, at the end of the day, what exactly did we gain? So the hard drive was increased by a factor of approximately 1.7 to 1. If we consider the uncompressed space we reserve for Windows, we had started with about 11 megabytes of free space, we gained roughly 61 megabytes of usable space on this small hard drive. In 1994 dollars, this would have been $61 worth of hard drive space, which translates to approximately $109 in 2021 money. Doesn't seem like a tremendous amount, but something like this would gain usable space and probably give you another year or two on that hard drive uh, before you had to spend the money to either add a hard drive or upgrade. Um, and of course it came free with the operating system and as we showed there didn't appear to be much of a discernible penalty at least in day-to-day -day tasks uh, you know we ran some benchmarks on a very popular game quake and then we ran some basic benchmarks on the CPU and the hard drive and the whole operating system as a whole um, you know, digging deeper, there might be some slowdowns in certain programs or certain operations or maybe in a mechanical hard drive itself. But overall, I think in day-to-day -day use for the average person, this would have been a benefit. Well, I appreciate everyone tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I'm doing here, uh, please hit the like button and smash subscribe. I'm always happy to make more friends out here. I encourage conversations, comments, uh, plus and negative comments. I do try and answer all comments, and if I don't know the answer, I'll be honest with you. Again, thanks.